everybody's on. Yay. <laughs> So everyone, thank you so much for joining this episode. You know, before we begin, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for taking your time out of your day to be here and to share your work with me and everyone who will watch this. You know, I am truly grateful for your time and your, you know, your uh, talent because all of you are very talented and I am very grateful to have you here. So, hi. <laughs> Say Hello. hi to everyone. Hi. I want everyone to introduce yeah. yourselves so everybody get to know each other and be, maybe become friends. Who knows? So, um, Facundo, you could start first. Okay. Hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, grateful to be here uh, sharing poetry with you. Uh, my name is Facundo. I'm from Argentina and I live in Miami. And I compose music. And from that music comes poetry, because I love words and writing. So that musical um, essence in mind, it, it goes through poetry and I, I compose writing. And uh, I have a novel and I have a poetry collection as well. And I'm working on more books coming up. So grateful to be here. That's very exciting. I, I did have the pleasure of meeting Facundo when we were in college, very young babies at what, 20, 21? Oh my God, we can't even say that. And I'm also grateful that I have your work. So very excited for that. Thank you for your introduction. And my name is Aradika. And among other things, I, I love writing poetry and I'm also a musician. Um, and my most like current literary project is an upcoming book of my great grandfather's poetry. Um, it's called Novias Que Esperan. And today I'll be sharing a poem from, from the manuscript. That is all exciting. We have musicians all over here and poetry. That's magic. And Lisa, it's your turn now. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you both. My name is Lisa. Um, I really, I really just love poetry. It's one of uh, my artistic outlets. I was going through my journal and I saw some old writings. So I just wanted to share something with everyone that I never brought out to any open mic or anything. Um, and how Chuby and I met, I don't even, I was thinking about this. I think it was through a friend, through Monica. I think through a friend. It was Pride Lines uh, three, two, several years ago, we could leave it at that. It was at Pride. Pride Parade. Pride okay. Parade, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's all I have. I'm no, it's okay. <laughs> little, little things here and there. It's okay. Well, you all know me. It's been years and I appreciate every friendship for reaching out and for wanting to be here. It, it means a lot to me because poetry is obvious, honestly what how I met so many amazing people, you know, and we're here. Well, some of us are here. I do have one more guest, but they couldn't make it, but it's okay we could continue with us. So now the next step to this is we share our work. So um, if we could start the same order, so Facundo, you'll go first and then I will go last. Okay, I wrote this poem, uh, it's called Alive, and it basically connects to my third album, which is uh, called Life. And um, yeah, I just, it's one of my latest poems, so. It's like fresh out of the oven, it's not even published yet. I mean, it's on Instagram, but you know, not physically published yet. So it's called Alive. Rays of light upon my face. My heart remembers God's love and grace. Music in the wind, remembering laughter and the harmony she sings. Memories from the past bring me back again, knowing that in the future, the sun will rise. Rays of light upon my face. Flavor in the moment, cherries in the state. For who knows, there seems to be no other way. Either with love, with all your heart, or the mind will go insane. Either way we fall, as we surrender to the light that shines within us. For after all, it is everything. Now which one may? Beyond comprehend. 
even if every time love slips to first like hell and shine with heaven above, much joy I carry with the light soul as I share it with those whom I love. No need for crying, jokes are fun, the frown dissolves as I taste the fruits of everything I have grown. No will to write a suicide note because the thinking is, I'd rather be taken immediately by God's call, enjoying the good times or the bad times I endure. See the cracks of my heart, the lights, waterfalls inside, opening consciousness to expand the galaxies within us all. And as the shatters more, every time I breathe, it is like being dead alive and then living complete. Because there's always more, deeper in width, length and time, in infinity, like an ocean of love. Yet, right in this, I'm alive. Oh, very nice. I felt that. The, the soul is much more than that, and that is truth. Anyone has anything to say before we... I really loved the, the rhyming scheme. That's something I really appreciate. Yeah, especially like most poetry that I've heard, like contemporary poetry, I would say, or poetry written by people I know, it doesn't rhyme. And I think like that's a really beautiful thing that I've seen most mostly in like classic poetry. So that's really beautiful. <laughs> I, can't forget that I love poetry. Well, I love writing in general, but to compose something in the moment and then you're like, right there with the emotions. Like me and Fakuna were talking about it a little bit earlier before we all got here that um, you cannot force it, you know? So when it comes, you know, you have to write it at the moment. If not, you just lose it. That's how I feel sometimes. Aradika, Aradika you wanna go next? Sure, yes. Um, so this is one of the poems from my, my upcoming book and so in the book, there is the original poetry of my great-grandfather, and then the translations in English. And then the third aspect is some original poetry called Response Poems. It was an idea, not mine, and someone else's who read the manuscript, and it would be a good way to interact with the poetry in a way that felt like respectful and loyal and, and still creative. Um, so this is one of the response poems. And it's called Tu. Eres el roce que mi piel prefiere. I burn underneath my skin. My soul craves freedom, but is wrapped up in coils. Sweet inebriation that transmits nectar into my blood. Eres música. I wanted to taste God and love, and in you I have tasted both. It's a little bit of a short poem, but... <laughs> oh, that was perfect. It's like one of those with the punch at the end. And it's like, ow, oh, I felt that. Yeah, you guys are Thank talented. You. I can't wait for your book to come out, though. I know I asked you, but it's like, I'm, I'm excited, you know, to actually receive it. And you know, to respond has... to the, the yeah, poem, I yeah. I, I thought it was uh, very intense, very um, condensed into the words. And the, the way that you read it as well, it feels like it has a lot of substance. And the change from Spanish to English is uh, perfect. It's incredible. It's, uh, yeah, it makes the point. You know? It's a very special. Yeah, it reminded me when I wrote up a poem in Spang Spanglish as well, um, based on Puerto Rico. And oh my God, I love the transitions between languages and they just flow so amazingly at least it's your turn that was on you <laughs> okay um before i do perform i want to say that um i kind of take a little bit longer than the average bear to process my thoughts and emotions so i think it's harder for me to give feedback right away but i do want to say to the both of you thank you for sharing period um I'm gonna share this poem, it's called Homie. It's like over 10 years old. Um, I think I was kind of like a couple years fresh out of high school. But I found it and I thought it was, I don't know, 
full of emotion. I wanted to share it anyway. Full of young, like hormonal emotion. <laughs> um, homie, I never saw you in this light, but last night it just felt right when you kissed me. It's been about six years and we've always been cool. You were my teenage love affair back when we were in high school. It was puppy love. It didn't mess up our friendship. We were there for each other through time and through our own relationships. Then years later, we crossed the line and now something's different. There's deep, reckless, passionate tension and we both can't deny its existence. And now with persistence, you rightly stroke me, but at the end of the day, homie, don't forget that you're my homie. You claim that one day I could potentially be your only, and I know that sometimes at the same time we think of each other when we're lonely. Homie, I know about your desire for flings. And what about your track record for heartbreak? And I swear to God, I'm not judging, but now I'm supposed to be different from the broads you had before me. I'm afraid because I can't foresee if our common grounds can stand firmly beneath our feet. And I know you can't promise me and we can't agree, homie, that if we proceed, you'll always be my homie. That we'll share our fears and our dreams. That you'll talk to me when you want to scream. You know the way you did when you were with your former ladies? I don't know if I could hold their position, homie. I mean, can we mix this friendship neatly with a love thing? Because although I'm mistrusting, I'm open-minded to adjusting because homie, it's more than your body that I'm lusting. You're about to make me cry. It's okay. I'm holding it in. So good. I love, see, this is why I like having you perform. She said, you said you were going to go get your, you know, like your poem. You found it, what, in your brain? Because you're so good at that. I can't do that. I could never do I cannot remember any of my poems at all. I don't have that capacity. I just don't. So good. That's it. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, sorry. I, I was going to say, yeah, I loved, I loved how how you like performed it. It felt like a performance, like very, very embodied. And and I also, that's something I would love to work to, like when I recite my poetry to make it more of an embodied performance that way. So it's less me reading on the paper and more of just like a direct conveyance of, of emotion and, and feeling. So very beautiful. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to uh, second that. <laughs> That was a great poem, amazing. Uh, we read it, and also just like Anadika, I also um, you know, feel like I would like to have that kind of embodiment, which is it makes it awesome. Because we, when people read the poems, it's one perspective, but when they recite it to you, it's another perspective, another experience. So you play with the poem in a different way. So it's awesome, amazing. Thank you. I appreciate you both for those words. Thank you. Grab the mute button, but I came back and tried to say all three of you, not just you both. Thank you. You're very welcome. I, you are so, all of you are so talented. I love this. I love this. Okay, so I guess it's my turn. So here we go. Like I was telling Facundo earlier, I wrote this, uh, started it writing it last year. But being here, knowing that I was going to be here with you all, I decided to finish it. So here we go. They say peace is tranquility, a state or period in which there is no war or a war has ended. But what is peace when the world is at war? And by war, I mean it is hungry, it is crying, people are fleeing, people are dying people leaving countries that are at war? What is peace when everyone is at war with themselves? What is peace if the children are not safe at home or at school? 
What is peace when man only thinks of greed? What is peace when your safety is unsure, trying to sleep but you're tossing and turning? And mass shootings keep taking our young black boys and you feel like you don't have a voice. What about our bodies? What about our waters, our rivers, our sun, our sons and our daughters? Fighting to stop line five, our daughters dying and everyone standing in, in line. A soldier dies and all they say is they did their time. But all of it is a crime. What is peace when the ones that are sworn to protect us takes us down? No one can defend us. We cannot win the war on peace. Uh, yeah. Wow. Are you, I'm sorry. I'm interrupting someone. You go first. No, I'm not. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, I just wanted to you how are you, it's lovely how you use the words uh, war and peace to make that comparison when uh, it's a reflection of society, how in this peace that we feel, there's a war behind it. And this is very, um, very direct, but in the directness, there's a poetry behind it because it's so direct that it tells so much behind it that it's going on. And that's wonderful. You really admire when, when poems they talk about social issues because uh, a lot of people can identify with it. So. That's great. I really enjoyed that. Um, I, I found myself wishing I could see the words visually though because like, I could hear, I can hear it to a degree, but and, and like understand like there was a lot of emotion and. But I would, I would love, I don't know if it's available online or if it will be available at some point, but I would definitely love to see like visually the poem because yeah, what I could hear of it and understand just from like, you know, audio, very beautiful. And it just felt very, like I, it reminded me of like a river or some body of water. Like it just felt so much movement. Um, yeah. Very beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, I might elaborate more on the poem. I might actually expand it, you know, but um, yeah, it might be, I don't know. Depend. For now, it might be a possibility to record and post it. I keep forgetting Lisa needs your time. <laughs> yeah, no, I personally want to hear, or see it again too because there were some parts I couldn't hear as well but I I'm a fan of your poetry and the way that you speak on social issues I I want to be able to express more in that way too I appreciate your work thank you um it, it's taking me a long time to get to this side because at first i was like oh my god you you don't want to be so controversial or you don't want to put the wrong people off and then i said no that that's not who i am you you know i'm gonna do it regardless because i, I being an advocate and an activist i just have to so it's like it's in my you know in me so but thank you next is flor anna with her poem she couldn't make it but here she is Hello, before I introduce myself, I want to just give a big thank you to No Filters, No Fears for having me on this podcast episode. I'm extremely grateful to be part of this. Um, my name is Flor Ana. I am the author of Perspective and Other Poems, The Language of Fungi and Flowers, Nourish Your Temple, and my latest poetry collection, which is A Moth Fell in Love with the Moon. I am also the founder of Indie Earth Publishing and a typewriting poet. Um, I'm so grateful to be here and, you know, I just want to say that I love writing because it allows me to find myself and go deeper into who I am and what fuels me, what drives me, what makes me feel certain things. Writing is my ability to be vulnerable with myself as well as with others when I publish my works and it's just something that for me means the whole world um it's my ability to slow down my thoughts and really focus on one thing and i'm extremely grateful for how far i've come in my writing and i'm super grateful for all the support that i have received and for all the people that have supported me and have read my books um i'd like to share one poem with you guys and 
it kind of goes on the same you know branch of loving writing and why i love writing poetry and it is titled on love my love for writing poetry is a hummingbird drinking the sweetest nectar a wildfire that can't be tamed but tames itself cereal left to sog in a bowl my love for writing poetry is the july sun a library of used books that smell ripe, the blood that courses my veins while mycelium courses the ground. My love for writing poetry is a New York New Year's kiss, mistakes made on a typewriter that make the text look prettier, more real. My love for writing poetry is a fire-breathing dragon, guava and cream cheese, dreams on dreams on dreams, my love for writing poetry is a sweet nothing that speaks of everything. Oh, by Facundo. Well, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. It's okay. Um, so I, I, I feel so grateful. Like my heart is so full of like, ah, you know, like inspired and like, I just want to go right now. And like, you know, just, I don't know, just talk and keep writing and this is why I love interacting with other writers and other just creatives because it gets your juices flowing and it just gets you like it's like a dopamine in some other type of way you know like all the serotonin all you you name it everything's just there and I thank you again Aradika like it's I hope I said it right um for being here you know new face and I just love like sharing but before we do end the, the session, um, there are a couple, like two questions I want to ask. If, Facu if Facundo comes back, I, I hope, you know, we'll ask him. Um, so question one, I will repeat myself when I actually see Facundo. Question one is, what, what inspires you to write? It could be short, long, like, however you want to answer this. It doesn't matter to me. Oh, uh, Aradika, if you're ready, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Um, what inspires me to write? I think there are many things that inspire me to write, but focusing more on like this project, my book, I think the desire to connect with one of my cultures, both ideally, but in this project I'm focusing on my mother's culture, on my Cuban culture. So the desire to connect with my culture in a way that feels meaningful for me and one of the ways that I feel deep connection or that I can create deep connection with other people or things is through language and through writing. And especially being as that my, my great grandfather was a poet, it feels, it feels very meaningful to me to do this project and to write poetry in both Spanish and English because those are the two languages that I am most fluent in. Um, and it feels like a like a linguistic representation of, of my identity. So yes, the connection to culture and to language that that is what inspires me to write. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. I love that that you could get your own experiences and you just put it on paper. Um, Facunda, the question was, um, what inspires you to write? I know it sounds like a simple question, but it it, it comes with a lot of you know, it's packed with a lot. So if you, or Lisa, you, if you want to continue, uh, if you want to answer. Um, I don't know. I feel like it still surprises me what inspires me to write. The inspiration can come from so many different places. The relationships I have with people, the relationships I experience, or I see other people going through just witnessing things in the world. It's emotion, anything. Um, but I don't know, it's just another outlet that I love so much. I just, I think, I don't know if any of you know who Shel Silverstein is, um, but he's a poet that wrote these books that I, grew up seeing in school. Um, I was very young and I fell in love with poetry then, just very short poems, just short rhymes. 
I just love it so much. I love putting it together, sitting with friends, freestyling over music and things. I just love poetry. So I, I might have went around in a circle, but that is my inspiration. <laughs> Trust me, it's okay. Just, isn't it beautiful though that we have this tool that we could use and be when we're creative, and we could just use it. And it's like, I'm so grateful that we could write and we're literate and education, knowledge, all the good stuff, you know. <laughs> okay, and now I give you the floor, Facundo. Cool. Thank you, and um, thank you for sharing. Um, I think what inspires me to write is uh, when I was a teenager and I began to read, like, you know, literature, world literature, I was impressed by the fact that I was reading texts from centuries ago, you know, from modern timelines. And I was able to understand what they were going through or what was happening back then. So just the fact that words can communicate, you know, through generations and through time inspired me to write and, and read. And then I think poetry is. It's not like a narrative of history that you get to understand what is happening in one time. It's just something that is timeless. So people that write poetry back then or before or even for the future, like you read whatever you read and you get an experience, you get a sense of what is happening. You get maybe many ideas or it just it opens you up to different perspectives. And I love that, that fact that sustainability and that source that one can be free and say, you know, mix the words in order to compose something. I mean, it's just like the piano or any instrument. You, you, you create a note and you make a rhythm, you make something that is confined. So I feel the same for poetry, just like with poetry, you can share knowledge and wisdom and, you know, yeah, educate and just being aware, just uh, being conscious and experienced, I think, because every, every poet is, is different and every poetry is unique. So it makes this is also a celebration to to our humanity, you know, one of the arts, of course. A thousand percent. Poetry have saved me more than I like to count. Like it's amazing. And you write beautifully, so oh my god, I, I, I want everybody to connect and like share your links of your stuff and whatever you have out there. Oh, I guess I have to share why I write. I mean, what inspires me to write? Everything, literally everything. Like I could just walk down the street and a nice breeze. And I was like, oh my God, that made me feel like, you know, like something, you know? <laughs> and then you just write. Um, I guess I feel everything like 10 times, like being a, a, a writer, a creative, a, an empath. You know, you feel so, everything so much deeper right right oh my god and then you're like what do you do with all these bottled up like well, how do you you know and this is why i have like over so many notebooks and so many books because you know like facundo i love reading um history i love history literature is like amazing i took two literature classes in college on purpose i didn't have to but i did <laughs> i did like it wasn't required of me but i did because that's how much I love being in the atmosphere of this, like our peers and exchanging ideas and thoughts and, and letting that flow, you know? And yeah, that's it. That's why I write because like one of my books says, the only that's the only way I know how to survive. I don't know any other way, you know? So yeah. I have another question and that will be our final thought. Last question is whoever's watching this, what do you want to tell them? Like, you know, like a, advice or, I don't know, anything. However it is, whatever you want to say. I will start first since I'm already talking. <laughs> and then I'll let one of you. Um, if you feel it, just write it. Don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. Because we, I know all of us heard it before oh, you shouldn't write about that, or you shouldn't do that, or, oh, you are a person, or, you know, woman, or non-binary, whatever, you know, and there's no place for you. There's plenty of, of, of space for everybody. Just write, just do it. That's it. Facundo, I wanted to say about your poetry um, that it's very, like, 
the feeling that I got from what you recited earlier, it was like, it felt light. It like felt light and airy. It was a nice feeling. That's what I have. I just wanted to tell you that. Thank you. Okay. I'm going, I'm muting now, I'm muting. Okay. <laughs> okay, Aradika, you could go. So some advice or thoughts. Um, I think to like to not be able for myself. There's so much writing that I've done that is probably never going to get published and maybe no one else is going to see it. But having it there and being able to look over it, you know, even months or even years later is such a beautiful feeling and to see the growth and like how some feelings have changed, some haven't. And it's just such a beautiful, a beautiful way of like collecting moments and collecting feeling. So, yes, I would just recommend and you know tell anyone who, just I think anyone, just period, <laughs> that they should write and and just express everything fully because it is just worth it. I kind of want to go off of what you were saying about just creating work that no one will ever see or it won't be published because I was just talking about that recently I said to a friend um, you know there are these creatives all over the world that are just creating these beautiful pieces of artwork and they're putting it away in a vault just putting it away and I was just like isn't that so exciting and I don't know if anyone would understand that like we might not be able to see these things but just knowing that there's all this passion going into these things. They're just these magical pieces of artwork, just hidden, just treasures all over the world is how I like to see it. I think that's really exciting. So I love that. I don't know what advice to give to the people because I'm really just trying to figure it all out as best as I can. <laughs> a lot of times I feel like a hot mess. I just try to spread love and be love. How about that? We need more love, more love and more compassion and forgiveness in this world. That's that's what I've got. <laughs> and thank you. I appreciate all of you sharing. I appreciate being here, you know? <laughs> yeah, we all could agree on that. Lots of love because we need it. We desperately need the love and the peace and just share the goodness. Like, it just mind boggles me that people just care about the next person in a negative aspect. I mean, not in a good way. I care what you all doing, you know, because it's all, you know, all good stuff. But we, we need that. Okay, Facundo, I'll let you. Yeah, it's just a beautiful thought that was uh, circling here. The fact that, uh, for example, one of my favorite poets is uh, Emily Dickinson. And she used to write her poems and put it in a drawer. And then for years, nobody ever knew that she wrote poetry because, you know, she couldn't publish. I'm not sure what happened later, though, but um, eventually got, they got published. And it's amazing how, you know, you never know what you got until you share it to the world and you inspire uh, other people. So, yeah, I mean, it's a shame that there's so many things that, you know, like, like you said, so many creators in the world that are creating other things. It's beautiful when they when we share it because other people get to see it and we reflect and you know it grows together with the world and that's amazing. I don't think I have a particular advice, but uh, I guess maybe inspiration would be that uh, you know when one begins to do anything, either is writing or, or playing an instrument or whatever it is, one is gonna suck at the beginning. You know, one's gonna be really bad. It's just a matter of practice and continuing the thing that you like to do, either what is, whatever it is, painting or whatever it is, dancing. It's just the, the more you do it, the more you practice it, and you see the evolution. It's like, like Aradika was saying, how you see the poems change, and some of them feelings they don't. But you know, just the writing through it, just through writing, you find, you know, experience and you find knowledge to see how to do it better and, and to find your own voice in some way. So I would say, you know, just express it out, let it out. You know, just the, the love that we have for oneself, to, to celebrate oneself, and the love that we all need as well as, you know, in this world. <laughs> that we all need now, actually, so. And yeah, thank you. This is amazing. It's beautiful to uh, share words and poetry with you all. It's amazing. 
Very grateful. That was beautiful advice. That was good. <laughs> like they like to say, there's no right or wrong. No, I appreciate you all. It's beautiful. I, I don't even know what to say. It's just thank you so much for your time. Like I know it's like, how do, what do they say? The artist, a starving artist, you know, because this is free, you know, and you guys are taking your time to doing this. And it's not even about the exposure, it's about you sharing what you love to do and. I feel like this is why I like to do this yearly. Like we try our best to come together and share, you know, and just for a peace of moment for these 40 something minutes we've been talking, it's been amazing, you know, and not I wouldn't have done it without you all for um, saying yes and coming here and wanting to share your peace. So I thank you all. And you want to say anything else before we log off? We, we all could talk at the same time. I don't care. <laughs> nice to meet you all. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Let's do it again. Thank you. Have a good night. And, yeah, Facundo. Facundo, thank you so yeah. much for telling me about this. I, yeah, it was a wonderful experience. And I loved hearing all the, the poetry. I definitely feel very inspired and it's just like a, a confirmation again like of why i love poetry and yes i need to connect with more hear other hear other work because it's just it's like fresh and gives me new ideas so thank you you know i feel like i feel inspired i feel amazing i feel like all the giggles and all the like seeing all the familiar faces and like getting to meet you for the first time it's like i don't know i love it oh, i love that and that's how we end. Good night. Good and like night, I always say, stay fearless, everyone. Yes. <laughs>